Hi everyone, welcome back to Dazzling News with me, Vanessa. Floodwaters continue to flow in Cambodia villages. Cambodian villagers find themselves wading in knee-deep water in their shop houses and homes days after flash floods swept through parts of the country which killing 39. Local media report, fields are inundated and water levels in rivers remain high. At least 240,000 hectares of farmland have been flooded, affecting over 245,000 people across the country. Prime Minister Hun Sen orders local authorities to mobilize assistance to those who are affected. The floods have killed dozens across Southeast Asia since early October. The region suffered particularly heavy rainfall amidst the onset of the La Nina weather phenomenon which is characterized by unusually cold temperatures in the equatorial Pacific Ocean. Thailand protesters demand Germany to investigate Thailand King. Thousands of Thailand protesters demanding reforms of the monarchy marches to the German embassy in Bangkok to put pressure on King Mahavajira Longkorn, who spends much of his time in Germany. The protesters also call for removal of the Prime Minister Prayu Chang Ocha, a former military ruler. They also want a German to investigate Thailand King and they wait for a response. Germany has said it will be unacceptable for King Mahavajila Longkong, 68, to conduct politics there, and Foreign Minister Heiko Maas said the European power continued to look into his behavior during sojourns in Bavaria. You know, it is our task. Our demand is bigger. We want the German government to investigate our king, whether he has been controlling the country from afar or not. I want the German government to investigate whether it violates the international law or human rights or not. We are worried if he's living comfortably in Germany. I don't have other intention apart from I only want good for him. We are curious whether the monarchy has conducted Thai politics using his royal prerogative from Germany or not. As Thai people, we will wait for the response. If nothing happens, we will come back. The government spokesman did not immediately respond to a request for a comment on protest. A separate letter, which are delivered to the embassy, asked Germany to investigate a number of issues including the king's lifestyles in Germany as well as accusations of human rights abuses in Thailand. Protesters accuse the monarchy of helping enable decades of military domination. They also complain about royal spending in Europe when the coronavirus has hit Thailand's tourism-reliant economy hard. Protesters want the king to be bound by the constitution and to reverse changes giving him personal control of the palace fortune and some army units. Thousands of yellow shirt realists support the king of Thailand. As the protests against the Thailand king increased daily, more than a thousand Thailand yellow shirts came out to the streets and demonstrated their support of King Mahavajila Longkorn. We, the yellow shirts people, had to come out today because we have to protect the monarchy institution. We don't agree that the institution has to be reformed because it's not creates any hardship for its people. We don't accept it to be reformed. Youth and student-led protests began in July to call for the resignation of Prime Minister Prayut Chang Ocha, a former army ruler and also a new constitution. Protesters accused the king of political involvement and marched to the German embassy to seek his exercises power during his stay in Germany. The policy no comment related to the protest and to the media. Royalists took heart when the king lauded as very brave a man who defied protesters by holding up a picture of the late King Bumibol Adul Yadej. But the reaction of protesters has been scathing. Prime Minister Prayut has ignored demands to quit and the crisis should be discussed in the parliament where his supporters are in the majority during an emergency session. Opposition parties tells he should step down for the good of the country and stop using his proclaimed support for the monarchy as an argument to keep power. Prayut's opponent says he only kept power to elections thanks to electoral rules and constitution drawn up by the junta he headed after 2014 coup. Japan and United States begin major military exercise aimed to counter in China in the region. Japan and the United States began air, sea and land exercises around Japan in a show of force in the face of increased Chinese military activity in the region. The Ken's Ward exercises is the first big drill since Yoshihide Suga became Japan's prime minister. Aim to country in China involves dozens of warships, hundreds of aircraft, and 46,000 soldiers, sailors, and marines from Japan and the United States. 
Japan's biggest helicopter carrier Kaga is in waters of South Japan, are accompanied by United States aircraft carrier the USS Ronald Reagan and its escort destroyers. The 248 meters Kaga, which are returned from patrols in the South China Sea and Indian Ocean, will be refitted as early as next year to carry F-35 stealth fighters. Suga visited Vietnam and Indonesia as part of Japan's efforts to bolster ties with the key nations in Southeast Asian allies and then followed by a meeting with the neighbor country sees as a bulk work against a China's growing regional influence. Japan has grown particular concern about an uptick in Chinese naval activity around the dispute island in the East China Sea that Tokyo claims as the Senkaku and Diaoyu in Beijing. Accompanied General Yamazaki on the Kaga, Lieutenant General Kevin Schneider, commander of the US forces, Japan pointed to recent activity by China that worried Washington and Tokyo that had undermined the territory's autonomy, China's military built up in the South China Sea and harassment of Taiwan by the Chinese military over the past few months. China says its intentions in the region are peaceful. Funeral ceremony for late Prince Abdul Azim, son of Sultan Hassan al Bolkiah. Brunei laid Prince Azim, son of Sultan Hassan of Bolkiah, to rest. Prince Azim was born in Bandar Seri Begawan on July 29, 1982, and received his education at Brunei International School, Raffles Institutions, and Oxford Brookes University, United Kingdom. He was the second born prince of Sultan Hassan al. The Brunei Palace announces Azim, fourth in line to succeed the throne of Brunei, and a film producer passed away at the age of 38. The palace did not disclose the cause of his death. He also underwent nine months of military training at the Royal Military Academy Son Hart. The late prince are laid to rest in the Royal Mausoleum in the capital. Vietnam evacuating people as typhoon is approaching. Vietnam is preparing to evacuate nearly 1.3 million people as the impact of Typhoon Mulave, which lashes the Philippines overnight, causing flooding, landslides and leaving at least a dozen fishermen missing. Hundreds of flights are cancelled and schools closed in affect areas as Typhoon Mulave approach over the South China Sea, packing wind speed of up to 165 km per hour and expect to make landfall. Mulave will be the fourth storm to hit the South Asian country, deepening a crisis in its central region that killed 130 people in floods and landslides and many still missing. State broadcaster VTV shows footage of military helping the elderly onto buses and directing boats to come ashore while residents and soldiers pile up sandbags on roofs to secure them from the approaching strong winds. A World Bank report, Vietnam is prone to destructive storms and flooding due to its long coastline. About 11.8 million people in Vietnam coastal provinces are exposed to the threat of intense flooding, with 35% of settlements located on crowded and eroding coastlines. The Disease Control and Prevention Agency provides flu vaccines to citizens in South Korea. South Korea sought to dispel concerns over the safe of its seasonal influenza vaccine to avert stress on a health system that is already grappling with the coronavirus. Meanwhile, the president, Moon Jae-in, says at a meeting to trust the health authorities' conclusion and announcement on influenza vaccine that they have reached after a review with experts. There is a need to expand the influenza vaccination this year, not only to prevent the flu, but also ward off concurrent infection and spread of the flu and the COVID-19. The director of Korea Disease Control and Prevention Agency says, starting today this inoculation for people aged 62 to 69 years to stop people going to the hospital with the aim of preventing the flu and the disease COVID-19. Public anxiety over the safety of flu vaccine has surged after at least 59 people died following vaccinations. Authorities say they found no direct link between the deaths and the vaccines against flu, which kills at least 3,000 South Koreans. South Korea, which began free inoculations for the last eligible group, has ordered 20% more flu vaccines to banish the prospect of concurrent major outbreak of flu and coronavirus, which will strain its health system. More than 14.7 million people have inoculated. About 1,200 instances of adverse reactions have reported among them, but no direct link with vaccination has been established, though 13 deaths are still investigated. The health ministry has said the benefits of vaccination far outweigh any side effect. Hong Kong National Security Law to Improve Business Environment 
George Liung, in an interview to China Global Television Network, says the law of the People's Republic of China on safeguarding national security in the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region will help improve the business environment in the region. He affirms the enactment of the law for the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region on safeguarding national security while sharing his expectations for the city's future development in the upcoming years toward China's 14 five-year plan 2021 and 2025. Well, it's both positive and negative, to be honest. Uh, positive in the sense that uh, the member think that uh, the NSL uh, will possibly bring back the social uh, order uh, after a year of uh, violent protests that disrupt our local uh, business environment. Smaller firms cannot do business you know, under the situation of violent protests, and that's why uh, they hope uh, you know, the NSL will bring the social order back, and that is they feel more positive. Negative in a sense that, uh, of course, the NSL, you know, attract a lot of foreign sanction, especially the US, and that creates a lot of uncertainty to Hong Kong on the international trade because they never know, you know, what uh, we're not allowed to do and what the rules of the game will be changing, and that will dis disrupt uh, our normal business operation. So um, in that sense, uh, our member feel uh, a bit quite negative. Holding the vision of the law on safeguarding national security in the Hong Kong can restore social order in the region. Leung and most HKGCC members are positive that the law's economic values for outweigh the uncertainties. Well, we did uh, have a survey asking the member about the NSL and uh, what the impact on the business as well as uh, what the plan in the future. Uh, we came back uh, more than half actually feel a bit more positive towards the NSL because they believe that, as I said, will bring back uh, the social uh, order so that they can run their business uh, as, uh, in the past. And uh, the rest uh, of the member who are feeling uh, negative because of the sanction, as I said. But so far we found that uh, not uh, many member plan moving out of the city. Anyhow, I mean, uh, uh, Asia is still a growing spot, you know, for this company, and they have been here many, many years doing business here. So, uh, I mean, uh, moving out of Hong Kong is not uh, such an easy decision. On June 30th, the law of the People's Republic of China on safeguarding national security in the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region was adopted by China's highest organ of the state power and promulgated in the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region. The law came after last year's prolonged social unrest and escalating street violence and plunged Hong Kong into gravest situation since its return to the motherland in 1997. Rampant activists of Hong Kong independence organizations and violent radicals as well as blatant interference by external forces have disrupted Hong Kong's residents' daily life and threatened their safety. With 66 articles in six chapters, the law clearly defines the duties and government bodies of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region for safeguarding national security and four categories of offenses, cessation, subversion, terrorist activities and collusion with a foreign country or external elements to endanger national security and their corresponding penalties. Various of damages in Vietnam caused by Typhoon. <laughs> Regarding Typhoon Molave that occurred on October 26, the loss of fishermen up to 26 people at sea is one of the strongest storms destroying many things and forcing hundreds of thousands of people to take over. Typhoon Molave, picking winds of up to 135 km per hour, which killed two people and left dozens missing. The government says two Navy ships are mobilized to find the missing fishermen whose boat sank when trying to return to shore. The military prepared helicopters, amphibious vehicles and deployed or placed on standby and 250,000 soldiers in preparation for what humanitarian groups anticipated could be a challenging aftermath. The typhoon will be another big test for Vietnam amid a spell of intense weather throughout October that caused the worst flooding and several deadly mudslides. At least 130 people had been killed in the central region including many soldiers with dozens still missing. Malawi hit the Philippines and the death toll there rose to nine. United States accuses eight men of conspiracy to be illegal agents for China. The United States Justice Department unsealed a complaint charging eight people with conspiring to work on behalf of China to engage in an international campaign to threaten, harass, surveil, and intimidate Chinese citizens to return to their home country. John Demers, the assistant to Attorney General for Justice Department's National Security Division, says 
Five of the individuals charged were arrested, while the rest are believed to be in China. Since 2014, at the direction of Chinese General Secretary Xi Jinping, China has been engaged in a global operation known as Fox Hunt. China describes Fox Hunt as an international anti-corruption campaign in which it seeks to locate legitimate fugitives around the world to bring them back for trial in China. But this is certainly not the whole story, and oftentimes it simply isn't true. Without coordination with our government, China's repatriation squads enter the sovereign territory of the United States, surveil and locate the alleged fugitives, and deploy intimidation and other tactics to force them back into China, where they would face certain imprisonment or worse, following illegitimate trials. The alleged plot are known as Operation Fox Hunt and Operation Skynet. Court records shows its goal are to target Chinese nationals living in the foreign countries and intimidate them into returning to China to face charges. Today's charges reflect yet another example of China's ongoing and widespread lawless behavior and our refusal to tolerate it. The purpose of this conference, encouraging Chinese nationals who are conspiring to support Chinese services to return to their country. Well, that's all the news for today, and see you 